Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today let's talk about a frame rotisserie. This frame for this truck, I need to clean up and paint. In order to do that, I want to be able to lift it up, roll it on its side, roll it up on its back, so that I can get to things easily and make sure I get every last inch clean and every last inch painted. So what I need to do is make something called a rotisserie, basically something that lets us rotate it around. You can buy a car rotisserie, but they're expensive. They start at probably about 2000 and go up from there. They're also designed to hold an entire unibody car. This frame is much lighter and, in fact, not near as big. It's not near as wide. So I don't need anything quite so heavy duty. And because I am the way I am, I want to build it myself. I've got some ideas on how this is going to work. So it's going to be a four-piece rotisserie. Each end will have two pieces. I'll have one piece that sits on the ground, that comes across, has wheels on it, and it'll actually be T-shaped, because I want to be able to roll the piece around. It's a base. I want it to be able to roll around without tipping over, so it's got to have three wheels. So basically, imagine a T-shape on the ground, and then a leg sticking up with a hole in it. That's all there will be to that piece. Then there will be a second piece that bolts between here and here on the frame, and then it will have uh, a round bar that sticks out that goes into the hole on the other piece sticking up. A lot like an engine stand. Basically, if you imagine an engine stand base, and then the head, instead of bolting to the engine stand, bolts between here and here and holds it up. Bolt one on this end, bolt one far down on that other end, then I should be able to take this whole frame, roll it around in the driveway, flip it over, get it cleaned, do that kind of thing, and then roll it into the garage for the winter so I can start assembling. If it's not completely clear yet what I'm building or how, don't worry about it. I'll get some stuff cut and we'll start assembling it and it'll make a lot more sense. Let's get started. Here's most of the raw material I'm going to use to build these. I've got two steel 2x4s left over after building an engine stand and the gantry crane. That's all I have left. I wish I had three, but I've only got two. So these will be used for the base. The base needs to be as wide as the frame, and we have to have a third leg and the, the upright piece. Two of these measured out, I should have just enough to do all of that. So that will be the main material for the base pieces. The upper pieces that bolt to the frame I'm just going to scavenge pieces out of this piece of crap three-legged engine stand. I hate three-legged stands. This one tried to kill me once already with a slant six on it, so I'm not going to screw with that. I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to use it for these cross pieces. The other material I need are some drawn over mandrel round bits um, for the equivalent of this piece and the piece that goes into it on each end. Got those coming. and. I've got uh, an idea on how to strengthen the, the pieces that come across here. So I've actually got a, a couple of pulleys from lawnmowers and some cable stuff coming. You'll see when I get that together, it'll make a lot more sense and it'll actually make it a whole lot stronger than just uh, running this. For now, let's get this stuff cleaned up, cut into pieces, and weld up what we can in order to uh, get ready for when those round pieces arrive. So this is what the base piece will look like. We'll have a wheel under here, under here, and under here. That way it can roll around, won't tip over. Up here we'll have a chunk of round tube that the cross piece that's bolted to the frame slips into. Let's get them cleaned up, welded, and get some wheels on. If you're a pipeline welder, or really probably any welder at all, you should probably look away at this point.
Next up on this base, as you can see it's upside down, so the upright sticking down here, but I've got to put these wheels on. Something about like that. Before I coat these, I want to clean them, make sure there's no grease, and get rid of most of the dirt. I'm going to use denatured alcohol for two reasons. One, I have it. And second, it should evaporate pretty quickly and leave no residue. It should work just fine. Acetone might be a better call, but I'll probably use that on the frame. For now, I'll just use alcohol on these. They're not going to be out in the weather or anything like that, so it should be just fine. This is the same stuff I'm going to use for the chassis. I've used it before and I really like it. Might as well use it for this as well. These pieces of round bar came in. I got them from All Metals. As you can see, I went overboard as I normally do. Those are thick wall. Each one of the uprights will have a chunk of this, probably about four inches of it, on it. And then the piece that bolts to the frame will have a piece of this that slides into these. Both of these tubes are quarter inch wall thickness. Not going to be terribly fun to cut. I'm going to start with the sawzall. I've cleaned up the ends of these and chamfered them a little bit just to make sure that the fit wasn't because of, you know, anything sticking out. You can see, still doesn't quite fit. If I measure the outside of this, it's called 2 inch OD and it's actually really close. 2.02 ish. And then let's check the inside of one of these. They're supposed to be 2 inch ID, and it's not the best tool for this, but about 1.90. So there's about 12 thousandths there. That would explain why it won't go in. So I'll take probably about 15 off of the outside of this, and then it should slide right in. Pretty nice fit. Now just flip it around and do the other side. All right, we've got those. Nice slip fit. They're ready to go. I can weld these outer shells to the base and then these to the cross pieces that attach to the frame. Okay, it's welded up, and that still fits nicely. We'll weld the other one together, and then we'll start the cross pieces. So the general idea is these cross pieces will look like this. This piece will go into the upright. It's going to get centered on this pulley. I'm going to lift this pulley up a little bit so it's probably center line with these. 
and then those are going to be a straight shot through. They'll get welded here and here, and then these pieces will be welded onto the end. Those give me some uh, meat that I can drill holes through these to bolt the frame to it. Once I have all of this together, the weakest point will be these weld joints here and here, because we've got the fulcrum here and then the weight of the frame trying to push that direction. So what I'll do to strengthen that is I'm going to take a piece of round bar, weld it on here, come up over the pulley, bend it, and then weld it back here. It'll work somewhat like a suspension bridge in that when these legs try to move that way in reference to this fulcrum, it's going to put tension on those. I don't know exactly what they're called in engineering terms, but it's kind of like a gusset. It works in the same manner. So an attempt to move that way will try to stretch these, which won't happen. And then I'll have one on the other side for this direction. That way when you flip it over, it doesn't matter. That seems way short. I don't know what the hell happened. Turns out my math was bad. That's 37 and a half across. 2 plus 7 and 2 is 11. Subtract. Uh, that's 26 and a half, not 16 and a half. So I had those at 8. They're supposed to be 13. So time to take it apart and start over. This one is much better. At some point somebody uh, did some custom bracketry here. I'm going to guess that it was for holding the bumper. This was bolted on, but it's also got a weld bead along the bottom that I'll have to cut off. But this one is in my way, so I need to cut it off and knock it out of the way. And then I'll clean up that edge. Before I bolt it down, I still need to put those gussets on. So I'm going to take a piece of round bar, go from over there, over the top of the pulley and down, then flip it over and do the same thing. I've got a piece of, I don't know, I'm going to guess this is about 3 8 round bar. And this is what I'm going to use. You can say I cut that piece of round bar. I'm going to attach it here and here. I could cut that thing in half and just weld it at all three points. That would work fine. But I think what I'll do is, I, at least on this first one, I'm going to try to just bend it in the middle. Just about like that. You can see I left a little bit of a gap there. That way I can push it down and it provides a little bit more tension. So I'll tack it down on one end, then push it down and weld the other. It could use a little bit of cleanup here and some paint, but otherwise this side is done. I need to still do one for the front. But it's just a replication, really, of this same scenario, just a little bit shorter. So I'm not going to bother showing you that. This will give you a little bit better perspective of what it looks like. This is the front one. It's all fabricated. I still have to drill the holes and bolt it to the frame. The reality is I can't put it onto the rotisserie until I get this transmission and transfer case out. And I also have to cut it off of the axle, so I need to cut all the U-bolts. So that's going to take a little bit of time. But this is what it looks like. Just need to drill holes, get some bolts in, and get these fabricated. And get these things and get these things attached. And there we are bolted in the rear.
I've got it up on the rotisserie and it turns like butter. It also rolls around really smoothly. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.